Hello everyone, welcome back to the last lap. My name is Jimmy, and today we have a lot of more testing stuff to talk about with you guys. There was some testing in Daytona, and there's also some silly season news that has come out, so we're going to update you guys on all of that. But before we hop into it, I just want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button and that like button. It really does help our channel grow. And you can also check us out on our Instagram channel, at The Last Lap News. We should be posting a lot more on there over the next few weeks as the season is about to start. We are just a few weeks away from the clash in LA. So as always, I have to introduce my friend and co-host Matthew joining me on the show. And we we're back in college, starting the final semester. So I think we're both feeling pretty good about that. So uh, Matthew has a feel to be back on the show and ready to talk about some testing and more silly season news. Well, it's great to be back. And uh, we just finished another round of testing for the next gen car for this season. And I liked what I saw, and I'm ready to talk talk some more about that. And we got one more test coming up right after Daytona. All right, so uh, I don't know if we should. Start. I guess we could start with. Uh, we'll, we'll save the testing for a little bit later. We'll talk about some silly season news and some other stuff first. So some really quick silly season news is uh, it was announced that Ryan Priest is going to run a few races for Rick Ware Racing in the Cup Series next year and honestly that isn't much of a surprise seeing that he is basically a part-time driver for Stuart Haas and their alliance with Rick Ware Racing and I think Rick Ware Racing they need some drivers to fill in part-time for a few rides so not really surprised to see that it's good for him to get a few more starts in the Cup Series not really expecting too much out of that since it is still Rick Ware Racing but who knows, they, they might have a little bit of a better season this year uh, based on their alliance with SHR, and hopefully we're not talking about them bringing out a caution every week this season. But to be determined about that, we will have to see about that. But uh, another more Rick Ware Racing news, maybe we should we should just talk about Rick Ware Racing this whole video. Why don't, why don't we just do that? We talk about Rick Ware Racing, how, how, how good they are, like how our expectations for them for next season. We should just do that instead. Um, sorry, Rick Ware Racing. We, we love you guys. Uh, Cody Ware is going to run full-time for them as well. That is not really a surprise since he is obviously the son of Rick Ware. Uh, so he's going to be running full-time. Great for him. Uh, hopefully he runs well as well. But other than that, expectations not really there for them this season. Hopefully they run well like that, that's all I really have to say about them. Uh, Jacques Villeneuve is going to attempt to make the Daytona 500. Uh, he was testing there a few, a few days ago as well. So that will be cool if he could try and make the Daytona 500. And I'll leave it at that for now. I'll, I'll let you get your topic, your opinion on those few topics before we hop into some other news and the testing. So go ahead and tell me what you guys say about those few pieces of news. Well, for the Ryan Priest driving a couple races with Rick Ware Racing, that does include the Clash for next month. That doesn't surprise me all, as SHR announced that he was going to run a couple of Cup races, but it wasn't going to be an SHR car. So it was. I mean, we knew it was going to drive Rick Ware anyway, because they're aligned with Stuart Haas Racing. So that's no surprise at all. And the whole Cody Ware signing, that's not surprising either. It's not really my first pick. But, I mean, I guess father and son. I mean, it is what it is. But I I'm not a fan of him driving the full-time car. I mean, I, I, would have, I mean, Josh Balicki was probably the best Rick Ware racing driver, in my opinion. Because <laughs> he seemed to stay out of trouble. But he, he, signed, he signed with Spire in the 77 car for part time so that's good for him but in my opinion they should have picked another driver but it is what it is Cody Ware but um but also I forgot to forgot to say this David Reagan is also gonna be part time in that 15 car for regular racing with Ryan Priest he's gonna be one of the part time drivers for multiple races which includes the Daytona 500 so that car has a charter so he doesn't have to worry about qualifying so it's great to see David Reagan back in the part-time basis for this season. And as for John, uh, John Villeneuve, I hope I said that said his name right. I, I thought it was no surprise to me as if you're going to test at Daytona, then that means you're pretty much going to be trying to go to the 500. So that doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's great to see him back. He, he is one amazing driver, world-class driver. 
Formula One champion. He he came to NASCAR. I remember when I first started watching NASCAR 2007, when he actually raced part time in the 27 car, which he's running the 27 car again this year. But um, it's kind of weird how that full circle right there. But um, and then he raced the Xfinity Series for Penske, especially when, on road courses. He's a really great driver. I know he had like some controversy during those Xfinity days with taking people out, but um, he's he's definitely an amazing driver, and I can't wait to see how he does in the 500. He tried in 2008, but he did not make it to the 500 due to a crash in the duels, which back then we had a lot more cars qualifying for those races. So I think with the low car count, I. This year, I think he has a ch better chance than he did back then. So, can't wait to see him try to make it in the 500. Yeah, it's always it's always cool to see these new drivers trying to make their way into NASCAR. I mean, we've seen IndyCar drivers do it. We've seen Film Formula One drivers do it. We've seen Travis Pastrana try and do it. So, it's always cool when we see these drivers from different series try to make their way into NASCAR. Danica Patrick. Which, you know, we're not going to talk about too much. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's always cool to see these new drivers try to come into NASCAR. And also, apologies if you guys hear dogs barking or rain because it is raining outside and my dogs get scared of rain and thunder. So, sorry and if you guys hear And for me, here is snowing, places. so you might hear some snow or some ice coming down here. Hear snow, yeah, because I, I can he hear snow falling. It's, it's so soft. It's going to cause so much noise. <laughs> I meant ice. My bad. Icicles. You, you never know. You can hear. You can hear icicles fall every now and then. Uh, but to spice things up a little bit, uh, there was an announcement made today. Well, Sunday, the day yesterday, for the day you guys are probably watching this. Uh, that Ice Cube, he is going to be performing during the break of the Clash. And Matthew and I, we've talked about this a little bit. And uh, Matthew, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you get your reaction to it first, and then I'll kind of summarize it myself. So go ahead and give me your reaction to seeing Ice Cube being able to perform at the Clash. I think you gave a pretty good summary of it, so go ahead and tell the fans what you think about it. Oh, I love it. Of course, man. Ice Cube and NASCAR, love it. I think also Pitbull's also doing a little show, I think, before the race. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, it's great. It's great to uh, have Ice Cube and NASCAR some sort of way, which um, is... I think, and I forgot, it said halftime show. I got confused at first because are, are you talking about NFL or NASCAR? But apparently, I forgot the class races. They do have like a little race break, which is basically the halftime. So I thought that was, that, was, that had me confused at first. But man, this is actually great. I mean, it fits the theme right with LA. He's from LA, you know, from, you know, watching movies like Straight Outta Compton. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing concert, especially for younger fans. Of course, a lot of fans, a lot of NASCAR fans are from the South, and they mostly listen to country music, which, which I'm I'm guilty of myself. I know my dad listens to a lot of country music, but I think with this, I think I like this. It helps to spice things up, give a little, get something different. I mean... We see all the time, whether it's the 500 or Phoenix, we see country singers doing the pre-race concerts. I mean, it's cool and all, especially if you love country music. That's, that's great. But especially with the younger generation, I feel like the the, the young, core cool audience doesn't really... I, I mean, that's their opinion, but I feel like they listen a lot more, you know, what Ice Cube does, rap, basically, hip-hop. So I think this is a great idea. To have Ice Cube do this halftime halftime show, and I think it's gonna be a great show. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think I think you summed it up best. That this is a great opportunity to get some younger fans involved in NASCAR, especially since this is in LA, and LA obviously one of the biggest cities in the country, if not even the world. And to have NASCAR in that city, and then bring a big name like Ice Cube to perform at this show, I'm sure it's going to get a lot more attention as well. So, uh, Drake, you're next, man. We, we need Drake in here. Or Kanye, we need Drake or Kanye or someone like that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure Pitbull has their phone number. Pitbull's just got to give Drake or Kanye a call, be like, "Hey, come perform at Daytona, man. Like, come on, we need you guys to come down to Daytona and perform." So, 
Oh uh, yeah, that would that would be crazy if one of them performed. At but. this at this point, I'm waiting to see LeBron James going bring going to give the command to start engines. That will definitely cap it off as be, the best LA marketing for NASCAR. I mean, he he's got stake in Roush, so um, maybe maybe we'll see him in a race someday. I don't know, probably not, just because he's more in, I think he's more invested in the baseball side of it. But uh, yeah, that's that was cool to see that announcement today. That Ice Cube's going to be performing, and like you said, Pitbull probably will. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he does, since he obviously owns a team now. So uh, that'll be cool to see Drake or I almost said Drake. Wow. Uh, Pitbull and Ice Cube performing. Drake's just on my mind. You know, I want Drake to just, you know, come perform in a NASCAR race. But maybe someday. Uh, but uh, we're going to wrap this video up talking about some more testing at Daytona and some next-gen car information as well. So uh, it was at Daytona a few days ago. It was, ooh, I don't even remember, Tuesday and Wednesday or something like that. Wednesday and Thursday. It was, it was a two-day test. And Dale Jr. was there for Henry Motorsports. He tested the number five car, so that was really cool to see him back on the track. I think he went out for like 30-something runs over two days, so that was really cool to be able to have him go out there and run some laps at Daytona. His interview afterwards, though, it was, it was a humbling interview, to say the least, because, you know, he was saying how uh, he's been involved in the sport in a very long time, and his wife has sacrificed a lot for him, and he just said that he's he can't see himself running a full-time season or in the Daytona 500 or anything like that with just how risky uh, super speed of everything is so that was a quite humbling interview from him another uh, f a funny part of this was the 43 car um, the skew on that car was way out of whack like they showed a clip of that car running down the front stretch and I kid you not the car basically looked like they was sideways running down the front straightaway so that, that was probably an illegal setup on that 43 car but I mean at, at least they're trying it out and they got very roasted for that uh, on social media, but that was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Uh, the package that they confirmed that they will be using, or for now at least on the super speedways, is a 510 horsepower, seven inch spoiler package for these super speedway races and Atlanta as well, since Atlanta is newly repaved and I guess it wants to be like a miniature super speedway. So that's the package they are going to use. And I believe it's more horsepower than last year at Super Speedways. I feel like it was in the high 400s last year. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on it. If I'm right or wrong, I'll put it in the video. But uh, I believe it was in the high 400s last year. So I believe that's more horsepower, which is good. Um, I'm hoping for some good racing. They did a mock race or short run or whatever like they did at Charlotte, where they had probably about 15, 20 cars out there. And it got pretty intense, I'm not going to lie. There were no wrecks, thankfully. Uh, there was one moment where Joey Legat or where Denny Hamlin ran Joey Logano all the way up the track in turn two and almost wrecked the whole field, so that was that was intense. But uh, it, the racing in the pack looked great. I mean, you, you couldn't really tell how good the runs were just because there were, I mean, eh, 15, there were probably 20 cars out there and probably 12 or 14 were actually in the pack. A few of them kind of laid back and weren't really interested in racing in the pack. But, I mean, the racing in the pack looked good. I couldn't tell too much about the runs and how strong they were and if people were able to block and all of that. But uh, from what I saw, it looked pretty good. Uh, hopefully, it's a good show in Daytona as well. But that also leads to my next topic, is which is a shortage of next-gen cars. And I believe it was Richard Childress. He was in an interview, and he said that uh, he only had two next-gen cars for each driver, uh, Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick, so only four next-gen cars total, and the clash is in just a few weeks, in on February 6th, I believe, so uh, only two next-gen cars per driver, that is quite a steep up, that is not that many next-gen cars, so uh, we've talked about this over the past few weeks, and this might lead to uh, not the best racing at the clash or the Daytona 500, Joey Logano said he's going to race like he always does, and I mean, I guess I kind of expect that from Joey Logano, but uh, everybody else, uh, I'm not expecting too much, uh, right, I would go ahead and warn you now, don't expect too much out of the Clash or the Daytona 500, because uh, the racing might not be as intense, uh, the Daytona 500 might be a lot of single file racing, I, the end of the stages I think will get kind of intense, and obviously the end of the race will be intense, but during the middle of the race, I wouldn't expect too much, I wouldn't get your hopes up, just because of how 
much of a shortage there are of next gen cars right now. So, uh, Matthew, what do you guys say about the testing at Daytona and then this rumor of all these teams just having a few next gen cars per team? Welcome to testing for uh, Daytona. I didn't really expect much from it because I, I, I thought they were just going to be using like a similar package to what they did last year because obviously last year's package brought a, a tense amazing racing even though they had to change it a little bit because the runs were too intense the cars were flying in the air easily just like the COT days but um other than that I thought it was just gonna be similar and one thing I did notice about this test was I thought there was just one part of the test that, that caught my eye was there was a like four or five cars that were in a single file line but then the rest of the cars were in the back like side by side and that single file line was pulling away from that group that was side by side and that reminded me a lot of the gen 4 super speedway racing which a lot of people get excited when you mention something similar to gen 4 racing <laughs> but uh, but um yeah, I, I I was watching a uh, Daytona 500. I, I noticed that similarity. Like, like if you get in a single file line, you're going to pull away from that pack. So I thought that was interesting to see. The whole Eric Jones car that was skewed. Yeah, that would not pass inspection. I don't know why it was like that. I guess it, guess when they brought it in, it brought brought the car over there it came like that. But um, they might want to fix that. <laughs> but. Other than that, it was mostly single car runs. The next day was um, there was a single file run, but other than that, that was really it, because they didn't want to tear these cars. Which is the next point, the whole shortage thing that's going on. I mean, it's a whole supply chain shortage that's carrying on the NASCAR. It's not NASCAR's fault, so don't pull out the blame card like you always do. It's not NASCAR's fault. It's just supply chain issues in a nutshell, which is um, unfortunate. I mean, I couldn't even find some french fries to, to put in the oven at the store because they didn't have any yesterday. That That's just how it is the, today with the supply chain issues. But, um, yeah, yeah, I think they'll be fine for the most part when it comes to clash time. I mean, they're still like a few weeks away, so they, that's still plenty of time to get at least like one, two, maybe a couple more cars for those teams. So um, I think they'll be fine, but it's still something to think about. So it's still early on, so they might, I still think they're going to get like a couple more cars, but... But yeah, other than that, I hope that I think it'll get resolved, as, as, especially with the se as the season goes on. I think that'll get resolved. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. Oh, I don't I don't know if we talked about this in our last video. I don't think we did. I think this came out in between the videos. But did we talk about Eric Amarola retiring? Yeah, we did. Oh, I think we did. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. I, I we just didn't realize it. Okay. No. Yeah. So. I just realized. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry that this is coming late, but I just thought of it on the spot, which is good, actually. But uh, Eric, Ram Eric Almarola announced that he will be retiring after this season, and uh, I think this is definitely Ryan Priest's chance to take over a ride for Stewart House Racing next year. Uh, I w I'm wondering, you know, if Eric Almarola maybe came to the team a few weeks ago and said, you know, I'm considering retirement and told them before, you know, the official announcement came out just a few days ago. And SHR maybe went out and got Ryan Priest as a part-time driver, basically saying, hey, you might be able to get a full-time ride in 2023. So uh, maybe that's what happened. Maybe not. Maybe it's just circumstances that fell that way. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ryan Priest, I think he's definitely the candidate for that ride, obviously, since he's running part-time for them this season. So uh, kind of unfortunate for Eric Amarola, but, you know, he's getting up there in age. He's got a young family. He's got some kids. And, you know, I think it's his time to retire, and I wish him well this final season. Uh, maybe he'll get a win. I mean, hopefully he does. Hopefully he'll get a win in his final season. I don't know. Uh, I'm predicting it might be at a super speedway or uh, maybe a short track or something like that. But uh, definitely a little bit of sad news for Eric Amarola fans out there. But, uh, Matthew, what you got to say about that really quick before we wrap the episode up? Well, it's always sad to hear when a driver has is going to retire. And... Eric Amarola is going to retire, and 
I mean, he's only. He, I mean, he hasn't. He hasn't been like the best driver, but he's certainly been a decent, a decent, consistent driver for for the most part. Obviously, twenty twenty one was a mess for SHR in general, but well, besides that year, it's seen, Eric Almirola has been a really consistent driver in my opinion. He obviously he's got three wins so far. He could always win this season, but. So far, he's got three wins. The most recent came in New Hampshire. Out of nowhere, he had a fast car that day. And that that was one of the most shocking wins of that year, besides like A.J. Allmendinger and Cup Series, etc. But it's really unfortunate, but that does open the door for Ryan Priest. Will Smithfield hang, hang with SHR and try Priest? Maybe, but I think not. I think they're more of an Almirola sponsor to them. Than sticking around with HHR General, so I I think they leave with Almirola. So we'll have to see if if Priest gets in that ten car. It all depends on sponsorship, but um, I hope this season goes well for Eric Almirola. I think he can win at least one. I think he can win one race. I mean, he showed twenty twenty one with the fast season he had. He can at a non super speedway, so he can. But I think we'll see. I think he'll still make the playoffs like he always does since he's been with SHR. So, yeah, I I, I wish every guy more all the best and um, hope he has a great final year. Yeah, I uh, oh man, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something about Al Marola, but I forgot what it was. So, uh, we're the last real quick thing I want to mention is that there will be, the next test session will be January twenty fifth and twenty sixth. That will be at Phoenix, which is great because, I mean, we had the test at Bowman Gray Stadium a few weeks ago, a few months ago, but that isn't a track on the circuit, so uh, it's nice that they're going to have a test at a short track on the actual schedule, and I, I think that's great as well for uh, everybody, you know, who might be fighting for a chance in the championship for next year, that they can get a little bit of feedback for that track for next season, so I just want to up update you guys on that as well. That's obviously for, I think it's going to be two, about two weeks away from now. So uh, just updating you guys on that. But uh, Matthew, do you have any other thoughts before we go ahead and wrap this episode up? Uh, not really, for the most part. All right, well, uh, let's go go ahead and wrap it up for this video. Uh, we might have a major announcement coming soon, but that's all I'm going to say about that. You guys might have to stay tuned for that in a few days. But uh, we'll definitely let you guys know on social media if that ends up happening. Uh, but... Uh, like obviously social media you guys gotta stay followed on there on our instagram uh we'll update you guys throughout the season any other off-season news that comes out hopefully we get a little bit more action before the season uh starts off we haven't gotten much xfinity series news in a while so hopefully something happens over there uh, but that's gonna wrap it up for this video until next time we'll see you guys in our next one